اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى في القران الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينُ عَلَى قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ بِلِسَانِ نَبِيٍّ مُبِينٍ وَمَا تَنَزَّلَتْ بِهِ الشَّيَاطِينُ وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لَهُمْ وَمَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ إِنَّهُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ لَمَغْزُولُونَ ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ दिस chapter 26 surah ash-shura of the holy quran is as follows and surely this is a revelation from the lord of the worlds the faithful spirit has brought it on your heart that you o prophet may be a warner in plain arabic language and the devils have not brought it and it is not befitting for them nor have they the power to do it surely they are far removed from hearing it shall i inform you upon whom the devils descend they descend upon every lying sinful one who gives ear to falsehood and most of them are liars and as for the poets it is the deviators who follow them and this is chapter 26 the verses i've read are in the three sections or three groups 192 to 200 295 210 to 212 and lastly 221 to 224 the chap title of this chapter is shora or the poets poets are only mentioned once in it near the end of the chapter most of the chapter goes to the histories of seven prophets moses abraham noah that's musa ibrahim nu alayhi salam and four others and at the end it refers to the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and those are the verses that i have quoted from this cha- chapter and here in these verses the chapter rejects the allegation of his opponents that he was nothing other than a fortune teller who learned from the devil or that he was merely the composer of good sounding poetry and of course this applies to all the prophets and the missions of many notable ones are mentioned in this chapter before ending with the holy prophet muhammad that they were not fortune tellers or poets the opponents of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam were familiar with fortune tellers in their society who claimed to predict the future and another word in english an old word for such fortune tellers is soothsayers which you may have seen in some translation of the holy quran these people predicted the future by reading the stars what we call astrology or horoscopes or through some forms of magic or through contact with what were believed to be supernatural spirits and it was believed by people in those days that evil spirits could catch some of what god was saying and then they could deliver those news to these soothsayers 
but in some distorted form. So a soothsayer could sometimes be wrong in their prediction. Today also we read about certain individuals who are said to have possessed the gift or power of giving news of future happenings. And we see books about them or a mention in the news or even films about them. But that is not the same as scientific predictions based on knowledge. The scientific predictions based on knowledge are not made on the basis of some secret knowledge given to a particular individual which others can't access, but that individual is somehow gifted in getting that knowledge. So scientific predictions are different altogether. They are made on the basis of data and information available to everyone, which anyone can assess and draw conclusions from. So having made that distinction then, when the Arabs among whom the Holy Prophet arose, when they saw that the revelation that came to him contained predictions of what would happen to them, they accused him of being such a fortune teller who was learning news from the devil. On the other hand, they could not deny the beauty of the words and the language style of the Holy Quran. So they said that this is because he is a poet who is good at crafting words which attract people. In this chapter of the Holy Quran, God informs those objectors that prophets are not fortune tellers nor are they poets. They arise to urge people to give up their evil ways and to do good. And they warn them that if they persist in their evil ways, then it's possible they would meet with destruction. And out of the seven prophets mentioned in this chapter, seven before the Holy Prophet, Regarding six of them, it is said that the first message they conveyed to their people and to the leaders of their people was this, guard against evil. In other words, guard yourselves against committing the evils that you are indulging in. Such a message and warning is never conveyed by a fortune teller, nor is it ever the basic mission of a poet. And the next thing which five of these seven prophets said to their people was, was this, Surely I am a faithful messenger to you. And the word for faithful here is Amin. And the word Amin comes from the word Aman, which means peace and satisfaction in the heart. A person is said to be Amin if people can feel fully satisfied and be at peace that they can trust him with their welfare. And this verse, surely I am a faithful messenger to you, tells us that every messenger only had the interests of his people at heart and he had no other motive for presenting himself as a prophet and messenger. After saying, surely I am a faithful messenger to you, each of these messengers then added this, and I ask from you no reward for it, for it means for my preaching. My reward is only with the Lord of the worlds. And this clearly distinguishes prophets from fortune tellers and poets. In case of fortune tellers and poets, their work is actually their livelihood and they earn money from people by their talents. They also gain fame and reputation. Now the advice of the prophets to their people is given free of cost. They ask for no reward for it. Now in certain walks of life, 
there are experts who give advice free if you ask them a question relating to their field they give you free advice and in the, in this connection there is actually an amusing saying about this and that saying is this it originates in the united states of america free advice is worth every cent and this is just a humorous way of saying that advice given free is not of much value and for proper advice you should seek a paid service but prophets gave people the best advice at no cost to those people and the only gain and recompense for the prophets was that in the eyes of allah they had done the duty for which he had sent them now moving on to the verses about the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the end of this chapter which i recited above they start by announcing as i said above as i read out above and surely this is a revelation from the lord of the worlds verse 192 of this chapter 26 in case of the seven prophets mentioned earlier in this chapter who came before the holy prophet each one is said to have come to his people or in the case of musa moses it says that he came for his people to rescue them from the pharaoh but the holy prophet muhammad can address each and every nation of the world because his revelation has come from the lord of all the nations of the world and then after that the holy quran says the faithful spirit has brought it brought it means the revelation to you has brought it on your heart this is addressing the holy prophet on your heart that you may be a warner in other words one who gives warning you may be a warner and it is this warning is in plain arabic language now this faithful spirit the word for it or the words for it are ruhul amin this is the angel gabriel or in arabic jibril now unlike what was believed about the fortune tellers the knowledge from god which came to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was brought by a trustworthy agency ruhul amin not by some evil spirit who was eavesdropping on what god was saying and just now i mentioned that the word amin was applied to five of the messengers of the five of the earlier messengers mentioned in this chapter and this was also although it's not mentioned here this is also a name given to the holy prophet by his fellow citizens long before allah made him a prophet and they gave him this name because they knew that he was entirely trustworthy so god sends revelation through a thoroughly reliable agency through ruhul amin to an equally reliable messenger amin to convey to people and this is this reliability is quite unlike the murky and doubtful ways in which fortune tellers obtain their information and again it says here that the revelation was brought to the heart of the holy prophet now although he experienced hearing his revelation but it was not the sound which can be heard by human ears and to understand this we can say or we can think about the dreams which we have in which we hear people talking we hear them talking in the dream but of course the sound they are making is not any sound that could be heard by any person outside that dream and also it stated here that the holy prophet is appointed as a warner 
whose warning comes in plain Arabic language. Now fortune tellers usually make predictions not in plain language but in double meaning language so that whatever happens they can claim that the prediction was correct. And you can see this for yourselves by reading horoscopes. If you go through all those uh, constellations of the zodiac, you will see that all the predictions are worded in similar ways and in sort of unclear, unspecific ways. So that whatever happens, it appears to you to be true. It appears to you that the prediction came true. Now that is fortune tellers. Coming to poets, they use a language which arouses people's emotions. And they use a rhythm that people can latch on to. So you can memorize uh, their poems and the the rhythm appeals to you, the rhythm itself appeals to you as well. But a prophet's revelation uses direct plain language because it is intended to change the behavior of the hearer for the better. That is its only purpose. And after this, the Holy Quran clarifies, as I read above, it says, and the devils have not brought it. The devils have not brought this revelation. The shiatin, the satans have not brought this revelation. And it is not befitting for them. It is, doesn't suit their low rank to do this. Nor have they the power to do it. Surely they are far removed from hearing it. So it's not the devils that brought, brought it from Allah because they are far removed from hearing the word that comes from Allah. Now, if you look at the teachings of the Holy Quran, they teach such a height of goodness that it is directly opposite to what devils put in people's minds to do. And the Holy Quran, Quran in fact, turned followers of the devils in the Holy Prophet's time into enemies of the devils. So this is why the Holy Quran or none of it, not one word of it could have been brought by devils. Because it teaches opposite to what devils teach and it turned followers of the devil into enemies of the devils. And this statement, the devils have not brought it, is also a reply to the false story the false story on the basis of which the novelist now known as Sir Salman Rishdi wrote his book The Satanic Verses. He no doubt thought that with his high literary accomplishments and talents which cannot be denied, he thought he was being very clever in constructing a novel based on a false old story. And that false old story in brief says that on one occasion the devil interfered in the revelation of the Holy Prophet Muhammad and the devil added a few words into it in praise of some idols. And then this false story goes that uh, Allah then cancelled what the devil had added. The whole thing is false. So the author of the Satanic Verses may have thought he was being, being very clever coming up with this plot. But the Holy Quran, since it is a revelation from God and not the work of a human, the Holy Quran refuted this theory 1400 years ago. It answered that book. And there is... There are other places in the Holy Quran as well which answer that book directly. Now, as I recited at the beginning, the Holy Quran then goes on to say, after saying the devils have not brought it, it says, Shall I inform you 
about the people on whom the devils do descend. Who are they? It says they descend upon every lying sinful person, the kind of person who listens to falsehood and most of them are liars. Now the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was universally admitted to be truthful, even his opponents admitted it. So the devils could not descend upon him with any message because he is truthful. Those people who are themselves liars and sinners and listen to the lies of others and repeat them and these are particularly lies against a true religion or a true movement. Those people invite the devils to come to them and then the devils mislead them further. And after this, the chapter of this chapter of the Holy Quran mentions poets, which is the name of the chapter. It mentions them in this way. And as for the poets, the deviators, in other words, the people who go wrong, the deviators follow them. Do you not see that they, meaning poets, that they roam around in every valley, meaning they roam around aimlessly in every valley, and that they, and that they say things which they do not do? Now the Holy Prophet Muhammad was accused of being just a poet, meaning that he was only good at composing fine sounding words and he was nothing more than that. In fact, they accused him of being what we call an idle visionary who just sits and talks. Now the reply given to this here in the verses which I read, it makes three points. Poets cannot bring about reform in the character of their admirers and devotees. And among their followers are also bad people as well. But the Holy Prophet Muhammad's followers were righteous, noble and pure due to his teachings and example. In fact, they became, even if they weren't righteous at the beginning, before being his followers, they became righteous due to his teachings and example. That's the first point the Holy Quran makes. The second it makes, mentioning this wandering, roaming around aimlessly, that poets don't have any clear mission or purpose or even beliefs. They just roam around, stumbling from one idea to another. For example, and you might have to excuse me for saying this, this is what we see in the writings of the great Muslim poet of the Indian subcontinent, Alama Dr. Sir Muhammad Iqbal. That there is this stumbling from one idea to an opposite idea. On the other hand, a prophet or indeed a reformer sent by Allah is very clear about his teachings and he has a very clear idea of what he wants to achieve through his mission. The third point mentioned here about poets is that they say things which they do not do. Now poets take up many just causes. For example, they write poems against oppression, injustice, poverty and such things, po poems which are quite moving. But they make unrealistic exaggerations. They make the, all these unrealistic exag exaggerations while practically they do nothing. And in fact, they lead lives by values opposite to what they preach. Now there's a famous uh, Western songwriter who unfortunately was killed uh, 
by someone by a murderer in uh, 1980 and he wrote a song entitled Imagine and in it he says to people somewhere along it he says imagine no possessions I wonder if you can no need for greed or hunger a brotherhood of man imagine all the people sharing all the world. But this gentleman himself, at his death, left an enormous fortune estimated at hundreds of millions of US dollars, while saying to people, imagine no possessions, and imagine all the people sharing all the world. On the other hand, the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam, actually gave up all his possessions and he showed no greed. As this song imagines says, he had no need for greed or hunger. Well, the Holy Prophet showed no greed. And as to hunger, of course, the Holy Prophet couldn't remove hunger from the world. But he placed himself in the position of the hungry in his daily life. He established a brotherhood of man, mentioned in this song, and he shared all his material possessions with other people. So the Holy Prophet Muhammad did not ask people to imagine anything. He showed it to them. So may Allah send lots of and an enormous number of Blessings on the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ameen. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim. Wa nafa'na wa iyaakum bil ayate wa zikri al-Hakim. Innahu ta'ala jawadun kareemun balikun barru rufu raheem.